those who are speaking and of course will will have questions in the and me okay so we have questions through zoom as we do in the chat i know i'm sorry in the chat yeah the questions will be in the chat uh, i'm just sort of zoom muting everyone folks so please just keep yourself muted uh, until uh, he, you know and really just keep yourself muted the questions are in the chat thank you so much okay i'm okay hello everybody uh rabbi mark winder i'm president of the florida democratic party jewish caucus and i'm delighted to welcome all of you to our uh zoom right after the primary election uh we are going to have uh chief val demings on shortly who will speak with us uh, for about 25 minutes i'd like to remind all of you that um to put any questions you have for chief demings in the chat and then we're going to have charlie christ unfortunately uh is uh indisposed and uh he's not going to be able to join us uh charlie's been with us twice during the last few months at length uh val demings uh, we we had scheduled earlier but then there were things that came up so you know we're 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 delighted to welcome her i'm going to open with a prayer and then i'm going to go immediately to chief demings uh for her presentation and write your questions in the chat i'm thrilled to have so many people uh, who signed up for this uh, that we later on uh, we have a, a proposal that we're that the board has approved uh, where cheryl unger is going to lead us in putting together a coalition of jewish democratic groups in florida who will all work together uh, to with the campaigns uh, to do what we can to reach out to the, the Jews of Florida. Uh, Professor Iris Sheskin is going to be with us later to talk about uh, the issues from the National Jewish Population Study, which indicated what our issues are, and then also to talk about uh, the the what a difference uh, the Jewish vote can make more than ever. So uh, we're thrilled to have everybody. Uh, I'm going to open now with prayer. Eloheinu ve'elohe avotenu ve'imotenu, our God and God of our ancestors. We thank you for the blessings of being citizens in this wonderful country. We thank you for the visions and for the ideals which comprise our highest aspirations as a country. We recognize all of us that this country was founded on the original sins of enslavement of African Americans and of extermination of Native Americans. We know the, the flaws that have been a part of our country and yet we also know of the greatness which America can become. We work together as Democrats, as Jews, to build that response to the higher angels of our national uh, culture. Uh, we thank you, O oh God, for having leaders the caliber of Chief Val Demings and uh, Representative Charlie Christ and you know, to lead us and we look forward oh god to your blessings in helping us work with them to make our democracy more secure we thank you for the blessings that you've given us as a nation and we ask your help in securing the very best that we are capable of becoming Baruch Shalom. We thank you, O God. We praise you, O God, who makes peace. Amen. Now, uh, Chief Demings, it's great to welcome you. Do I see you? Yes, I am here. Great. And uh, as we say, Mazel Tov. You did it. <laughs> mazel Tov, yes. Yeah, Mazel yes. Tov. I like that. <laughs> And we are so thrilled, we're so thrilled to have you representing us. Uh, and uh, we look 
look forward to working with you and I think with uh, Charlie Crist and with all the other fine candidates that we have up and down the ballot so that we can at least give ourselves the very best chance we can to turn Florida blue. But we're thrilled to have you. Thank you. Thank you for well, being let, let me say good evening to all of you. And Rabbi, thank you so much for the invitation. Thank you for being persistent. I'm so sorry to you and the members of the caucus that I had not been able uh, to get with you sooner. But it is just a good time to come together. As you all know, it is the day after Florida's primary. And believe me, Jewish caucus, I took absolutely nothing for granted. Uh, we have been working hard because, as you all know, um, this election matters. And I know every election, we say that this is the most important election of our lifetime. How many times have we heard that? But Democratic members of the Jewish caucus, I'm here to tell you today that I really do believe in all of the elections that I have voted in or ran in, that this is truly um, the most important election. Why do I say that? Let me start here. Um, I was in the Capitol on January 6th. I was there to witness the peaceful transfer of power, that American tradition, that American tradition, the counting of the electoral ballots after the people has spoken. But you all know this story. I know you watched and heard the horrors that occurred at the Capitol on January 6th of last year. This angry mob descended upon the Capitol, refused to accept the will of the people and beat law enforcement officers down with pipes, baseball bats, and flagpoles carrying the American flag. They stormed the Capitol chanting, hang Mike Pence, the vice president of the United States, and then rolled the gallows on the Capitol lawn. So they had the desire and the means. You know, what makes our nation great is the fact that our system of government, our democracy, the rule of law, the Constitution, we talk about freedom a lot of times every day, but we also know that freedom is not free. It comes at a cost. It comes at a price. And when we think about what our priorities are in this nation at this critical moment in time, are in our history. I come before you tonight, you all know, I am the daughter of a maid and a janitor. I went to work in my family, youngest of seven, but the first in my family to go to college. But I went to work, my first job was a dishwasher. From there, I worked at Dairy Queen and McDonald's flipping burgers to number one, help my family out, number two, to help put myself uh, through college. I made a decision in college to dedicate my life uh, to public service. As I looked around at the injustices that occurred growing up poor, black, and female in the South, I made a decision a long time ago that I wanted to work to make the world a better place, to make the world a more equal and just place. I worked as a social worker, a career law enforcement officer, I had the honor of serving as the chief of police. I'm serving my third term in the House of Representatives. I serve on the Judiciary Committee, all about the proper application of the law. I serve on the Intelligence Committee, making sure that America has the resources that it needs, that our military has the resources that it needs, that our allies like Israel have the resources that they need to keep America and our allies around the world safe and secure. The safety and security of the United States and the safety and security of our allies is the foundation. It is the most important goal that we have because we can talk about inflation and yeah, we need to drive down the cost. We can talk about the price of prescription drugs. Yeah, we need to drive down the cost. We can talk about education and health care. We can talk about equal rights and voting rights and civil rights and women's rights. And yeah, we are fighting for a woman's right to choose. But let's think about how we build two great nations. 
We build them on the foundation of our freedoms, the foundation of our democracies. And so we have to, we know that Israel is, I believe, our number one ally uh, in the region. And as a member of the Homeland Security Committee, we and intelligence, we help to lead the effort to make sure that our friend and ally has the resources, the support that it needs. As you know, we've invested billions of dollars in Israel's security program like the Iron Dome. We will continue to do that because this relationship that we have is not a one-way street, right? Israel's security is directly tied to America's security. And as we work together, I'm so glad to be here, a part of this Jewish Democratic Caucus, celebrating democratic values, coming together, working together to make sure that we have the boots on the ground, the people that we need, the voices on the phones, the knocking of the doors, to make sure that we elect people, only people, that we do not settle for any elected official that does not share our values. When I think about the African-American story and I think about the story of the Jewish community, I am so glad to see the unbelievable work that's being done to bring those two stories together. Because I really do believe sharing our stories and our experiences as one only makes us stronger and better and more prepared for our future. Look, I cannot be more honored to represent you as a Democratic nominee for the United States Senate. My husband likes to say that the best indicator of future performance is to look at past performance. I do not pick winners and losers based on your religion, your ethnic background, your ability to pay to play, like unfortunately my opponent in the general election does. My job as an elected official representing the state of Florida is to represent all people, that we do everything and we can to make the American dream that we all celebrate come true. So I look forward to spending the next 10 weeks uh, with you as we move closer to electing people who share our values up and down the ballot in Florida. I thank you for your help. I thank you for this opportunity to come before you, and I look forward to answering your questions. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you so much. I want to remind you, you were our guest back in, I think it was February. With uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Yeah, you were with Debbie Wasserman Schultz talking about uh, black Jewish relations in Congress and in Florida and so forth and so on. So you're an old friend of ours. <laughs> and I, I remember having breakfast with you and your husband. Of course, oh. the three of us together could have taken out the room. So, you know. Oh, we could have. I think we did. <laughs> you're, you're, you're the same size and you're not that much shorter, so it's great. But it's so great to have you and we're so thrilled uh, to have you uh, representing us and carrying on the fight. Uh, Thank you so much. Yeah, well, we have a few questions. And I know you have to you have to jump off because you've got another commitment. But uh, let me we, we do have some questions and uh, let me see it in the chat here. Got it. Uh, one question uh, that's that's uh, can you share how the Democratic Party will be directing resources to Florida and there is support for making you one of the uh, the uh, the top uh, potential Senate races? Well, you know, this race has been named by several different entities as one of the top 10 seats are likely to flip. And we also know this race is not easy, but I'm sure that you all have been seeing uh, the Marco Rubio campaign kind of floundering um, as of late. Matter of fact, there's an article out today that says uh, Marco Rubio says his campaign is a disaster. Look, I, I'm, I'm sure uh, the NRCC and the GOP never in their wildest dream imagined that this race in Florida would be competitive, but it sure enough is. I know that you all have been watching the polls as of late. Uh, the last three polls, two have them tied. One has me up, but we take absolutely nothing for granted. We have been with the Democratic 
senatorial campaign committee from day one. Uh, they have been at the table. They have agreed to help with our resources. We're still in the process of trying to decide what that actually looks like in terms of dollars. But believe me, they are at the table. The Democratic National Committee also has invested in this race. And so we're doing everything that we need to do to make sure we have the resources to win. Look, this is a good problem to have. But our fundraising, as you know, every quarter that we have been in this race for five consecutive quarters, incumbent by millions of dollars. This past quarter, he, mail, he raised $4 million. We raised $12.2 million. That's just one quarter. But for mil, by millions of dollars. And so we're working hand in hand with the Democratic Senatorial Campaign a Committee. Matter of fact, um, Leader Schumer is doing a fundraiser for me uh, in a couple of weeks. So we're excited about where we are. My friend, my best friend when she was in the House, uh, Senator Jackie Rosen, is also leading the Elect More Women to the U.S. Senate um, campaign. And so she has also been very helpful, also doing fundraiser for me. And so we're excited about where we are in this race. But believe me, we take nothing for granted. I know that Marco Rubio will never outwork me. We know that. And so we're going to keep doing what we need to do to win. Well, I want to remind everybody, put your questions in the chat. I've seen a couple of hands up, but we need the questions in the chat. So please put your question in the chat so I can ask them. Uh, I, I do see Joe some, Lund, too. Bong yeah. Soon and uh, Joe Geller, both put your questions in the chat, okay? I, not We don't recognize anybody uh, speaking from the floor, but we do want you to put your questions in the chat. Um, so uh, we have a, 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 several people are concerned about the degree to which Governor DeSantis has uh, played footsie with overt anti-Semites like Doug Mastriano in uh, Pennsylvania last week, his uh, news conference with Mastriano, even though we all asked him not to do it. Uh, but uh, he just he just went his merry way. And, uh, you know, Mastriano had said he uh, that the this uh, uh, this site that he was working with were doing God's work and uh, they were they're overt anti-Semites. And that's that's the kind of people that uh, DeSantis and he, and he thinks that's OK. Rabbi, I got is sick and tired of people like Ron DeSantis blaming him for their mean, hateful, divisive rhetoric. And what I have learned, certainly growing up being a, the victim of discrimination myself, we can, we can have zero tolerance of discrimination of any kind. Anti-Semitic behavior is unacceptable, whether it comes from a neighbor or whether it comes from the governor whether it comes from a senator, and let me just say this, I am so glad to move past the primary because now we have a ticket. And I know, I, I work in the House of Representatives with our Charlie Chris, and I know this is an issue that is important to his art right as well. I think that at the end of this day, we're gonna have the right leader, right time, that will not tolerate the kind of, I can't think of a better word, foolishness, that is coming out of Tallahassee and quite frankly that we've seen around the nation. Through my work on the uh, Homeland Security Committee, we have worked diligently to make sure that there are grants available so that synagogues, for example, around the nation, we've certainly seen them here in Florida, out in Texas, that have received threats or attacks of any kind are prepared to in a proactive way to protect themselves, but certainly if they're the victim, unfortunately, as we've seen of an attack, to be able to have the resources and the training that they need to survive those attacks. But they are the direct results of anti-Semitic behavior that has gone unchecked. We need the right leaders, and I believe Charlie Chris is the right leader for the governor's mansion, and I am the right leader to send to the United States Senate. Yeah, well, we, we certainly uh, look forward to supporting you and working closely with you. 
Uh, now, what, what do you think uh, is the number one issue that you want to emphasize in your campaign? Uh, what, what is the, the, the most important issue that, that, that you think we need to focus on? Rabbi, thank you so much for that question. And look, you know, sometimes, and, and I'll, uh, give me a, a little while to go around the fence here to answer your question, because what we're seeing with inflation, what we're seeing with the price of goods and services, gas at the pumps, of course, people are feeling that every day, but let's kind of tuck this away over here. I'm really pleased with the passage of the Inflation Reduction Act that we know will help tremendously in dealing with some of those issues. But I see this former police chief as the biggest threat facing our nation right now is the threat to constitutional rights. Um, and along with that comes this effort to divide us, not to unite us. When we see, for example, Roe versus Wade that passed, you know, 49 years ago, and then see the efforts effortlessly to just overturn that ruling, to take away a woman's constitutional right to choose, constitutional right to privacy. And what I always say to every group, some people may say, well, that's not my issue. I'm not concerned about a woman's right to choose. Don't do that because the reason why discrimination of any kind, we have to call it out. We can never tolerate it because it might be on somebody else's street today. But if we create a belief that discrimination over here is okay, believe me, it'll be on your street tomorrow. And we certainly saw in the Supreme Court's decision that Justice Thomas didn't waste any time telegraphing that he had the will to possibly look at other constitutional rights and take those constitutional rights. So, Rabbi, I just believe that the foundation of who we are is our democracy, the con that governing document, the Constitution, and that we have to make sure that we're protecting the individual constitutional rights not just of the privileged few, but of all people. Chief, you're fantastic. You're wonderful. I think you're we, really fantastic. We fantastic. Be, uh, we, you know, it's going to be a tight race because our races are always tight in Florida. But you're you're the one to carry it, and uh, we love you. We always loved you, and we look forward to your leading us to victory in November. Thanks so much for being with us. Really. No, thank, you. thank you so all for your prayers, for your support, uh, for standing with me and rallying around me. It means the world to me. I don't take it for granted. Together, I really do believe we can do all things. And so thank you so much. Thank well, you all. We, we look forward to working with you the next few months and forever. Thank you. Hi, Joe uh, Gellert. I uh, see you. Thank you very much. Uh, Bye -bye. We have now with us uh, Austin Durr from the Charlie Chris campaign. As uh, many of you heard at the beginning of our meeting, uh, unfortunately, Charlie Chris was uh, feeling indisposed and uh, kind of wrung out. Uh, so uh, Austin Durr is going to speak to us briefly. Uh, uh, about uh, the Charlie Chris campaign and uh, how we're going to be able to coordinate with him. Uh, and then we're going to go to talking about the formation of our uh, Jewish uh, coalition of, of, in Florida, our Florida Democratic Jewish uh, coalition of groups to work together with the campaigns uh, and uh, to help us win in November. So uh, we have... Uh, Later, Cheryl Unger coming on after Austin Durr, and then Professor Ira Sheskin is going to share insights from the National Jewish Population Study conducted by the Pew Foundation and the ways in which the Jewish vote in Florida could make all the difference. So uh, without further ado, I'll turn to Austin Durr. Are you there, Austin? Yes, sir, Rabbi. How are we doing tonight? Good to see you. Good to see you. Welcome. Welcome. I'm sorry that Governor Chris couldn't be with us, I, uh, and uh, but we'll look. He has been with us in the past, and we've appreciated that. And we know that he's uh, very much uh, with us and working with us. So, thanks. Thanks for coming. Yeah, no, we'd love to to get him with you you all uh, very shortly. We've got him basically.
basically running from 6 a.m. this morning on Morning Joe to doing the CNN New Day at 7 and interviews and calls all day long because we really got to make sure that we bounce off of this uh, win last night in the biggest way possible in order to defeat Ron DeSantis. And that's, you know, that's the mission. That's what we've been working on since May of 2021. And, uh, you know, Ron's got a lot of money. Everybody knows that. But uh, Charlie's no uh, no slouch when it comes to fundraising himself. And, um, you know, part of the strategy, and we've seen it play out uh, amazingly well for, for, um, for Chief Dimmings, is the grassroots donations, uh, online donations. And that's a, a big reason why she has uh, raised as much money as she has, and it's going to allow her to go toe-to-toe with uh, Ruby on TV. And now that our primary is over and we're the nominee, we've seen we've already raised a million dollars today, and, you know, we're just going to keep on plugging away at it, um, you know, because we got to take down DeSantis. I mean, the guy is tearing our state apart. It's it's all this, you know, cultural war stuff. You know, the guy, the guy can't even uh, condemn Nazis that are running around the state leafleting neighborhoods and holding rallies on overpasses and you know some of those folks are carrying the signs it's uh pretty scary um and so you know charlie's about bringing decency and respect back to the state unifying democrats independents and and moderate republicans uh you know to kind of bring back um you know not dissimilar to what joe biden's trying to do at the national level which was get trump uh out of there and uh you know bring back normalcy to government government and you know, trying to fix and solve problems versus just, you know, fighting for fighting's sake and the pursuit of power, which, you know, we all know that the stances is trying to become president. <clears throat> Everything he does is focused on building up that profile, appealing to that far right base in Iowa and New Hampshire and all the other primary states. And, uh, you know, we got to stop him here in 22. This is a this is an easier, cheaper way to do it than to have to face off with this guy on the national stage in 24 and everything that he represents. I mean, he's like, in a lot of sense, a lot of ways, he's a Trump junior in the sense that he, you know, has kind of modeled himself after Donald, but he is, he's more dangerous because he doesn't have sort of the narcissistic hangups that, uh, that Trump does. He will be a more efficient operator, uh, in this sort of effort to destroy our norms and our democracy. I mean, that's really what this is about. This is the rise of American fascism. And we're going to put it down here in Florida. And Charlie won last night because he's the candidate that, you know, a majority of Democrats think has the best shot to do it. And so, you know, I, I, I wake up every morning uh, energized for this fight. I mean, for me personally, it's a moral mission. I've got a six-year-old daughter, and I don't want her to grow up in a world where this kind of politics uh, is successful and, and succeeds both, you know, continues to succeed in Florida and at a national level. So, um you know, it's personal for me, and it is for for Charlie too. That's why he's in this race. Um, you know, well, Austin, we're we're with you all the way. We're very upset about the rise of anti-Semitism, uh, which is all part of the feeding of the uh, of the bigotry and racism and misogyny in the society, and uh, that uh, Ron DeSantis is a champ of that. That's why I was up there in Pennsylvania last year, uh, last week, uh, supporting. Uh, Mastriano, uh, right. a overt anti-Semite, and then uh, and then we also uh, see the rise of uh, white Christian nationalism and the numbers of, of, of people in the white Christian nationalist camp who want to make this into a Christian nation. And uh, you know, this is uh, very clearly not the uh, not the America that the framers of the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence imagined. Uh, and uh, that uh, these are reasons why we as Jewish Democrats should have absolutely no question of how we're voting. Because it, it's never been clearer to us that the Republican Party is the home of those who are our enemies. And uh, Charlie is our champion, along with Val Demings, and uh, we need your leadership. I don't know if you heard my prayer at the beginning, but we're all praying for you. Thank you, Rabbi. Thanks, Austin. Thanks for coming up with us and being with us. And we look forward to spending more time with Charlie. We've had a couple of good sessions over the last year with him, and 
we look forward to being partners all the way. We, we need everyone's help. Thank you so much. And, and thank please you. feel free to go to charliechris.com for, uh, you know, volunteer or, or send, uh, send support. Yeah. And everybody, you can chip in too and support the campaign. So thank you, everybody. Uh, I turn now to Cheryl Unger, the secretary of the Florida Democratic Party Jewish Caucus, uh, who is going to uh, outline the initiative that we have where she's working with all different kinds of Jewish Democratic groups uh, to do everything we can to be supportive and to get out the Jewish vote to vote Democratic more so than uh, than ever. So. Uh, Cheryl, you there? Yes, I'm here. Hi, Rabbi. Thank you for having me. And uh, I, I know I personally was thrilled to hear both from uh, Chief Bell Demings and from the Crisp campaign. Uh, what we are doing as a leadership team is working together to identify other Jewish organizations. Each has their own areas of, of responsibility, but the idea is to come together and and figure out actual action oriented things that we could do, whether it, as Val Demings just said, be boots on the ground and organize some uh, canvassing. Just uh, like getting, Val getting, about the, the, sorry, uh, can someone, can someone go on mute, please? I think everybody is supposed to be muted right now. Thank you. I'm sorry. Okay. So whether, as Val Demings just said, you know, whether we're boots on the ground, we're making phone calls, we're doing that relationship organizing with our family and friends, we're making sure our college kids that are going to school out of state stay registered here in Florida and get their absentee ballots and all those types of activities, bringing candidates to you at future meetings, and we'll, we'll be bringing you those information, but our focus will be on education, I mean, action, educating you and being an actor. And if anybody wants to help, uh, please put your name in the chat and a phone number, and I'll be glad to contact you. Thanks. Thanks, Cheryl. And now uh, we're delighted to have uh, Professor Iris Sheskin, the foremost uh, Jewish demographer in America. Uh, those of you who don't know, uh, Professor Sheskin, for many, many years, has been instrumental in innumerable uh, studies about Jewish life in America. And he, of course, uh, being a professor at the University of Miami, is particularly focused on Florida. So, Ira, we're thrilled to have you, and we always appreciate all of your help. Uh, and we're ready for your presentation. Hello? Hello, Ira. Unmute yourself, Ira. Now, um, now I, you should, everybody can hear me now? Now we hear you. And you can see my screen. Right. Yep. Okay, so let's, let's get started then. Um, the Jewish vote in Florida uh, can, in fact, make a significant difference in the elections. The things we're going to look at tonight uh, are, first of all, the fact that many elections are in Florida have been very close. The Jewish population has grown and will probably continue to grow. We're going to look at the size and geographic distribution of Florida Jewish communities, at the percentage of um, Jews in various communities in Florida who are registered to vote and registered as Democrats, some information on the issues that are important in the Jewish community. I'm putting a special focus on anti-Semitism as an issue as you'll see, and then a little bit about what we have to look at for messaging to the Jewish community. So as we know, um, Bush won Florida in 2000 by 537 votes. Trump won by tiny percentages. And Nikki Fried beat Max, uh, Matt Caldwell by only 6,700 votes, right, out of 8 million. So elections in Florida can be quite close. And you'll notice that the Jewish candidate, uh, Nikki Fried, the counties that she won tend to be counties that are either like um, uh, where the University of Florida is, 
or they are in fact urban counties, which is where the Jewish population in Florida lives. So from 1940 until about 2000, the Jewish population of Florida skyrocketed from 21,000 up to 630,000, but it's continued to grow now and has reached 663,000. And this does not include the 70,000 snowbirds who live in a variety of places. As a percentage of the U.S. population, Florida was really almost non-existent until 1940. And now since 1980, it's been 8 to 10 percent of the Jewish population of the United States. So in arguing for resources from the central office, we should point out to them that 10 percent of Jews live here. And, you know, it's a steady 10 percent, but it's still 10 percent. California has been growing as a percentage of all Jews. And if you take a look, New York in 1960, 44% of Jews lived in the state of New York, and that's now down to 25%. And we can, we can map that. 1980, there were 5.9 million Jews, and you can see New York, California, followed by uh, Pennsylvania and Illinois with the big ones. Today, we're looking at at least 7.3 million Jews Florida continues to be one of the big three states. And this shows you the change in Jewish population from 1980 to 2021. Florida's gained about 200,000 Jews. 3.2% of uh, Floridians are Jewish. But the actual percentage of people who are voting are Jewish is doubtlessly higher than that first. More of the Jewish population in Florida is of voting age than is the case of the general population. In Southeast Florida, Dave Brown and Palm Beach, half of Jews are age 65 and over. Also, well over 90% of the Jewish population is registered to vote in Florida. And studies show that Jews are more likely to actually vote than non-Jews, especially in midterm elections. So my guess has always been that it's likely that at least 5% of the people who actually vote in the state of Florida, particularly in midterm elections, are Jewish. We also know from the American Jewish Yearbook, of which I'm the editor, that we know how many Jews live in various communities throughout South Florida, including like 12 sub-areas within uh, Miami-Dade and about nine sub-areas within Broward, et cetera. We're not going to have time to look in detail at this right now. I just want to make those of you who are doing planning aware that this information does exist. What I did here was I superimposed the U.S. House of Representatives districts, right, over where the Jewish population lives. So you can see there really is, for example, in district number two, very few Jews. Okay. So that information is available as well. The Miami, Fort Lauderdale, West Palm Beach area, right? Um, as you can see here, 8.7% of the population here in South Florida is Jewish. As, as metropolitan statistical areas go, only New York has a higher percentage of Jewish than Miami, Fort Lauderdale, West Palm Beach. Here's the detailed information, which again, we don't have time to look at, but if someone wants to know the best guess at how many Jews are in Gainesville, for example, it's 2,500. If you want to know, you know, what's, how many Jews are there in Eastern Fort Lauderdale, it's 9,400. So we do, in fact, have that kind of information. That's the third page of that chart. Political party. The red is Republican and the blue is Democrat. No surprise there. So Jews in Miami are about 18% Republican and 53% Democrat. In Broward, they're 17% Republican and 56% Democrats. So the, clearly, most Jews are selecting to be Democrats and not Republicans, being registered to vote. There are four or actually five Florida communities there. And as you can see, a very large percentage claim to be registered to vote. Now, when we do survey research, we need to understand that sometimes people give the answer that they think is the socially acceptable answer, which is, yes, I'm registered. 
even allowing for that, for some percentage of that, at least nine out of 10 uh, Jews are in fact registered to vote. On the under 35 age group, it's a little bit lower, but still quite high. And Jews vote uh, in far greater, as a far greater percentage for Democrats than other groups. This happens to be broken down by, by religion. Now, we know if we break it down by race, blacks vote Democratic more than Jews do. But by religion, right, you can see the red here is Republican, that Jews are the least likely to vote for the Republican candidate. Now, the American Jewish Committee sponsors a, a survey generally once or twice a year that's done by SSRS, which is the uh, a survey firm that I have worked for and also that um, uh, CNN uses for their survey. Uh, the information in this little chart here is the same as the information right here. People were read one, two, three, four, five, six answers here and asked, what is the most important issue? They were allowed to say something else, and 20% didn't. didn't, didn't they, they didn't mention one of these. They said something other than these six. Um, however, the, the research, SSRS did not tell me how many people here said Israel. Uh, this is, by the way, the best survey method that they used here. It's a nationwide random digit dialing survey. This is the most random sample you're ever going to get. It comes out of the American Jewish Committee. The second most important issue, as you can see, uh, Israel doesn't show up here either. This is in the U.S. as a whole, not in Florida. This type of information is not available for Florida. The poll, that type of poll hasn't really been done. Now, the AJC asked, do you think... Biden or Trump will be better at fighting terrorism. So as you can see, Biden beats out Trump on terrorism, uniting the country, Iran, COVID, combating anti-Semitism, and crime. The only place where Trump comes anywhere near Biden is on U.S.-Israel relations. This is a different survey done by the Jewish Electoral Institute, which is a nonpartisan survey. It was done online of 810 Jewish voters. The methodology is not as good as what SSRS did, but they asked a different question, right? They read all of these choices right here and asked people, you know, is that one of the most important? Is it very important? And then there was somewhat important and not at all important, which on this slide is put together. Notes, like all Americans, concern about the economy and jobs, concern about health care, the coronavirus response, right, and Medicare and Social Security. Notice where anti-Semitism comes in. It is way ahead of Israel. Now, as I expected, Val Demings talked to us about Israel. And I think as, you know, we, we do want to know their answers. The reason I don't think Israel shows up closer to the top is not because people aren't interested or because they don't feel attached to Israel. People are interested, they feel attached. It's just that there's rarely a race where there's a true difference in the two candidates in terms of their stand on Israel. There may be some difference, but both candidates have a stand that fits within the mainstream of the Israeli political system. Clearly, if one candidate was what we would call pro-Israel and the other one wanted to see Israel be taken apart, the Israel issue would be more important. But notice where anti-Semitism is here. And for good reason now. Notice that uh, since basically the, over the past couple of years, right, since Trump came into power, and I've got some numbers here in just a minute, the total number of anti-Semitic incidents reported to the ADL has went has gone way up, okay, over the past few years. This is harassment, that's vandalism, that's assault. This comes from the Pew study that Rabbi uh, Weiner mentioned. Uh, com the 2020 compared to 2015, 76% of American Jews 
believe there's more anti-Semitism in the country. 5% think there's less. And 19% say the amount of anti-Semitism hasn't changed. Notice that uh, four of these five years, right, were in years that Trump was president. In Florida, we also have an anti-Semitism issue. This is personally experienced anti-Semitism in the local community in the past year. Let's, let's take Jacksonville as an example. One out of five adult Jews in Jacksonville in the past year experienced anti-Semitism. What do you think the answer would be if we asked any time in the past five years have you experienced anti-Semitism? Clearly much higher. Now, many of the other South Florida communities, the ones that are retirement communities, are significantly lower. And that's because most, many, many Jews here in South Florida, right, live in retirement communities where almost everybody is Jewish or 80% are Jewish. And even if non-Jews are anti-Semitic, they wouldn't say something. This is for children. Uh, take Broward County. 14% of the children in Broward County, Jewish children, experienced anti-Semitism here in Broward County in the past year. So this is something that over here is perceive a great deal or a moderate amount of anti-Semitism in the past year. Not surprising that Jacksonville is at the top. Most of these other communities uh, are, are in the middle, but still a good portion of Jews in Florida feel that there's a great deal or a moderate amount of anti-Semitism in their local community. So Here's a question from uh, another survey you can see uh, at the bottom. It's a National Post election survey. How much do you think Donald Trump's comments and policies are responsible for the recent shooting that took place at the synagogue in Pittsburgh? Only 16% say he's not at all responsible. 12, not really responsible. So 72% see him as very or somewhat responsible. I put the word in bold in here. They didn't use it. I think the proper way of looking at this, you know, people say, well, but Donald Trump's got a Jewish, you know, Jewish grandchildren, et cetera, et cetera, is, is first of all, I, I think many of the things he say, says do fit in the category of being anti-Semitic. But is he anti-Semitic to the point that he would go out and take action? Probably not. But... Many of the things that come out of his mouth emboldening the anti-Semites who otherwise would have kept quiet and not done anything about it to go out and commit anti-Semitic acts. Here's the number of anti-Semitic incidents in the United States, okay, according to the ADL. You can see from 2008, you know, basically down to about 2015, it was, it was decreasing or remaining about the same year. 2016 to 2020, look at what happened to the number of anti-Semitic incidents reported to the ADL. And of course, these numbers are way lower than the truth because a lot of people experience anti-Semitism who don't even know the ADL exists, perhaps. So, a little bit about messaging. The Jewish population, particularly in Florida, is an older population. So... What issues are going to speak specifically to them? Support for the elderly, Social Security, Medicare. It's a very highly educated population. Nationwide, twice as many Jews have a college degree than non-Jews. That's what, that's what the data show. So support for science, for climate science, for example. Big issue, becoming a bigger issue. It's a high-income population. It's an urban population, too, so any issues that impact urban areas could be particularly important. For younger Jews, ways in which Jews help everyone, as well as environmental issues, are going to play well with younger Jews. The Pew study from 2013, we've looked at some of the stuff from the Pew study in 2020, found this, with the partial exception of the Orthodox, and I put partial in there because what we found is it's really the ultra-Orthodox, the Hasidic and the, the um, Yeshivish, as they're now being called, who are, have started to vote Republican 
and are much more conservative on these issues. The younger modern Orthodox tend to be closer to conservative Jews. With the exception, partial exception of the Orthodox, Jews are united around abortion, gay rights, immigration, church state issues, support for gun safety, uh, health coverage for all, and voting rights. Lastly, support for Israel, I made this point already, is really not the key issue. I think personally, with the problems that we've had with anti-Semitism and some of the things that our current governor has done, is an issue that will appeal to Floridians. So a little summary, Florida is a purple state, let's hope still, with close elections. The Jewish population of Florida has grown significantly. Most Jews in South Florida, uh, most Jews in Florida live in Southeast Florida and in urban areas in general. A large percentage of Democrats, the vast majority are registered and vote. The issues important in the Jewish community, Israel is not the thing that's going to make them vote for Democrats. There are plenty of Republicans, in fact, maybe more, that have really strong views on Israel. Anti-Semitism in the U.S., I think, is a big issue. Messaging to the Jewish community needs to be tailored to an older urban population and a younger population that is urban, relatively wealthy, and highly educated. So I'll stop right there and, and uh, take questions. Anybody want to put questions in the chat? Wonderful, Ira, thank you so much. But let's see what, if we have questions in the chat. All I see here is somebody saying great presentation. A few more of you could say that if you'd like. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's okay, we're glad to have that. <laughs> yeah. I'm looking here. Okay, I don't, don't see any, uh, any uh, specific questions here. Uh, and of course, we, we're, part of this is, uh, is, is just getting used to these ideas that the Jewish vote can really make a difference in Florida. And that even though we may be only, uh, what would you say, three and a half, four percent, of the population in Florida, that we're a higher percentage of those voting. Uh, we can't add that anti-Semitism and, uh, and issues of, uh, of white Christian nationalism do motivate us highly. Okay. I'll unshare my screen so we can go on with the program. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. How, how do I, how do I, come on, share screen. I'm trying to see if there's any other, any more. I'm trying uh, to see how I get the share screen off. <laughs> uh, Your share screen is currently off, by right? If you want I, to I am, I am getting some questions in. Um, let's see. Ah, here it is. Found it. Is there any data on how Jews vote in the midterms? Um, for Florida, no, not specifically. The polls tend to be done in the presidential election years and not in the, in the midterm years. And the, the problem always is this, that if you do a, a poll of people in Florida and Florida, three out of a hundred are going to be Jewish. So if you do a thousand surveys in the state of Florida, you find 30 Jews, which isn't enough, right? So what's done sometimes is to take the last 10 surveys that had a thousand interviews in each one, each cuts about 30 Jews. You take the 10 polls, push them together, you got 300. But there's just not enough, you know, uh, of a sample size to say anything about Jews unless somebody does an exit survey and goes into Aventura, let's say, and interviews most people there are gonna be Jewish who are voting, interviews people as they leave the voting place. The problem, of course, is that the Jews of, of Aventura are quite different from the Jews elsewhere. When you just do one polling place, you're gonna get a biased representative. Aventura Jews tend to be Russian 
they tend to be Israeli, they tend to be Hispanic at much greater numbers than the rest of the state. Uh, is there a, a tendency for in South Florida for there to be a cancellation of the influence of the Jewish vote by the Cuban Republican vote? Well, I a, a cancellation. Well, first well, the, the, the Cuban the, the Cuban Republicans obviously voted for, almost certainly voted for Trump. Many of them, anyway. Yeah. But um, you know the the majority of, of Hispanics in Miami Dade County still voted for a uh, Biden and not for Trump. The percentage of Hispanics voting for Trump actually increased. And maybe part of the lesson there is, is that the Democratic Party needs to make a greater effort and not just assume that all Hispanics are going to vote uh, for Biden. One would think that the, that the way in which the, the Mexicans have been treated and the, by Trump and all of that would mean that all Hispanics would vote against Trump for that reason. That turns out not to be true. There really is, his, the term Hispanic is a made up term. Cubans are very different from Venezuelans who are very different from Mexicans, etc. These folks, before they migrated to the United States, didn't even know the term Hispanic. I have evidence to, to show that. That they learn they're Hispanic once they're here. And by joining all Spanish speaking people together, they have more political power. But I, you know, the the um, the Cuba. Well, we we do need to look at the fact that the, that the Cubans are now starting to vote Republican more. After all, if you think about it, it was John Kennedy, right, who who welcomed them in, and now a good portion of them have started to vote for Republican candidates. Uh, I wrote uh, Norman Olshansky in Sarasota uh, wants some clarification on why Israel seems to be on the back burner. And he wants to know, have we taken the position that Israel's support is a Republican issue and not supported by Democrats? No, I, I don't think that's the case at all. I just don't think, you know, if, if you were running against, let's say, Ron Paul, right, whose who's, um, stance on Israel is, is questionable, uh, then I think Israel is an issue that we should... Um, concentrate on. But I think that, you know, you, you can't look at DeSantis and say that he's not strong on Israel. He is strong on Israel, isn't he? I don't see anything he's done in that state, in that sense that that's negative about his support for Israel. So, you know, Val Demings looks like she's so strong on Israel too, and I'm sure that Chris is strong. But I, I there's not going to be enough of a difference there. People are not going to decide who to vote for on that basis. Decide who to vote for on other basis. All right, so it's not a matter, it's, it's not that we don't care about Israel, it's that voters are not making decisions based on differences in uh, support for Israel. Is that what you're right. I Yeah, yeah. But like I said, I think every, most Jewish voters are going to want to know how candidates feel, and they're going to want a candidate who supports Israel. Now, it could be that they're to the left or center on the is kind of toward the middle or left or right, but not extreme left or extreme right. I don't think Israel is an issue that's going to sell. I don't think we can convince people that one candidate is that much better than the other candidate. I think something like, look at the anti-Semitism that's going on now. And look what Ron DeSantis hasn't done is, a, is an issue that we can we can sell to the Jewish community. Uh, do you uh, agree that Jews who vote Republican tend to be one-issue voters uh, as far as the USA alliance with Israel, or do they uh, and do they ignore rising anti-Semitism and church-state division? Well, you know, the Pew 2020 uh, survey showed that American Jews were much more likely to um, feel that Trump uh, handled Israel better, not better than Democrats necessarily, but that Trump was, was um, friendly to Israel. But most American Jews think that Trump was not good for the American Jewish community. Yes, I think that to some extent, not everybody, Many of the 
Jews voting for uh, Republicans. Um, Israel to them is the most important issue. And they tend to be, the such people tend to be very to the right on Israeli politics. And in that case, DeSantis is probably to the right of where Chris is going to be. Yeah. Okay. Uh, could you uh, just to, to uh, what about differences? Be- and I'm taking these questions out of the chat. So. Right. Okay. Uh, are are Jews in Florida uh, different from Jews in other parts of the country? Well, dem- demographically, yes. Okay. Demographically, they're older, right? Uh, for one right for one thing right um they're much less orthodox you know D- dade county is about 10 percent orthodox brown and palm beach are about three or four percent orthodox if you took the state as a whole maybe four percent of jews in the state are orthodox go to new york and that percentage is way way higher in new york than it is than it is here um they t- Jews in Florida also tend to be less connected to Florida. You grew up in New York. You moved to Florida at age 60. You're now 80. New York is still home. And that's why you look at attendance, even at sporting events. Right. You were not watching the Marlins as a kid. Thank God, because they're not much fun to watch. You were not watching the Dolphins as a kid. You didn't go to those games with your dad, and now you want to take your kids. Your heart is still with the Yankees and the Giants or whatever. And that applies to absolutely everything we do. I mean, I've talked to people who've been living in Florida for 30 years, and they say they're going back home for Passover. And so one of the problems that we have with getting people to commit the things that are happening in Florida is that they still kind of feel like they're not part of this place. And that's, that I think is a big difference. And now we're going to start to see a number of people that projected. You can be a, a lawyer in Manhattan, right? Or a, um, a finance type person in Manhattan now, and you can be a Zoom. Have a job on, on in Manhattan and live in Florida. And I understand from a number of people that they're starting to see that happen. That's anecdotal evidence. I don't know if it's a major trend, but those people are going to have one foot here and one foot there. And the same thing applies to snowbirds. Snowbirds look at this as the place they go for vacation, not the place where they really live. And we've got 70,000 snowbirds. And I'd love to know where they go. You know, I mean, maybe those folks could be convinced that the place they ought to register to vote is here in Florida and not in New York. Don't let them vote in both places, right? Three Republicans in the villages got uh, uh, summoned because they voted here and uh, in Chicago, I think. You can't do that. But maybe if we could get those 70,000 to say, you know, your vote in New York is wasted as a Jew. New York is going to go in the presidential election New York is going to go Democrat no matter what, how the Jewish population votes. If the Republicans got another 10 or 20% of the Jewish vote, New York would still go Democrat. If they vote here, right, they make a much bigger difference. So maybe some type of campaign to get the snowbirds to vote here in Florida might pay off some. Ira, uh, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. We're looking forward to uh, your continuing to share your incredible knowledge with us over the next few months. Uh, and uh, this was just kind of a force vice of, uh, of what, you're, what you're doing and what you're finding out. And we look forward to working with you in the future. So thank you, everybody, for joining us with the Florida Democratic Party Jewish Caucus. We have uh, upcoming meetings on the 21st of September and the 23rd. Uh, the programs will be announced. There We have uh, local county caucuses in Sarasota County, in Polk County, in Hillsborough County, in Miami-Dade County, in uh, in uh, Broward County and in Palm Beach County, and we're looking forward to having caucuses, Jewish 
caucuses all over the state of Florida. So uh, if you want to, you're interested, let us know. We'll look forward to work with you. Thanks again, Ira. And thank you, everybody, for joining us. It was really terrific of all of you to turn out the way you did tonight. Thanks. Good night. Record.